The Environmental Control System, ECS, uses bleed air from the pneumatic system to provide air conditioning for the cockpit and cabin, filtered air recirculation, conditioned air supply for gaspers, and fan air cooling for avionics located in the electronic bays. Additionally, an emergency ram air ventilation system is provided for cockpit smoke removal. An optional cargo bay ventilation system provides adequate airflow to the forward cargo compartment. The two ECS packs are installed in the wing to fuselage fairing. The AMS controller controls the bleed airflow to each pack independently through the respective pack flow control valve. During normal operation, engine number one supplies bleed air to pack one, while engine number two supplies bleed air to pack two. Via cross bleed, a single bleed source can supply both ECS packs and a single pack is capable of keeping adequate cabin, cargo, hold pressurization and temperature. Air recirculation from the cockpit and passenger compartment is provided via two recirculation fans located in the pressurized section of the airplane. The recirculation fans draw air from the recirculation bays, direct them to the mixing chamber and impel the air back into the distribution system. The total flow entering the cockpit and the passenger cabin is made up of approximately 52% fresh air and 48% recirculation air. With the recirculation button pushed in, fan operation is automatic. The fans will be commanded off if the cabin pressurization control system dump button is pressed or if smoke is detected in the recirculation bay. The Gasper air distribution system provides air to each pilot and passenger position. Air flowing from the mixing manifold through the Gasper check valve supplies the Gasper ventilation system. When the Gasper valve is opened, air from the right recirculation fan supplies the Gasper system. During normal system operation, the Gasper shutoff valve remains closed. It automatically opens whenever the Gasper air supply exceeds 35 degrees Celsius, 95 Fahrenheit. This prevents hot air from blowing onto the passengers. The forward eBay ventilation system has three fans, which provide forced cooling air for the number one secondary power distribution assembly, SPDA-1, Emergency Integrated Setter, EICC, and all other avionics located in this eBay. The fans draw air from the cockpit and expel air toward the underfloor recirculation bay. A flow sensor is used for fan flow health monitoring. The center eBay ventilation system has three fans, which provide forced cooling air for the center eBay electronics, the left and right integrated control centers, and SPDA-2. The fans draw air from the rear cabin return and expel it towards the underfloor recirculation bay. Flow sensors are used for fan flow health monitoring. The aft eBay air flows from the passenger cabin and is expelled towards the underfloor recirculation bay. The ECS provides ventilation for live animals in the forward cargo bay. This optional system contains a forward cargo fan on the side of the bay to provide underfloor recirculation air into the bay. The system also contains a shutoff valve at the outlet of the bay that closes in the event of fire and thus preventing Halon from leaving the bay. In addition, in the event of fire, recirculation forward cargo fans are commanded off to prevent Halon from entering the cabin. 
The Pack One Ram Air ventilation consists of a ventilation valve installed in the emergency Ram Air ducting that connects the Ram Air duct to the Pack One outlet ducting. The emergency Ram Air valve is commanded open any time the airplane is in flight, and Pack One and Two are commanded off or failed, and the airplane's flight altitude is less than twenty-five thousand feet. The Pack Two Ram Air ventilation consists of a check valve installed in the emergency Ram Air ducting that connects the Ram Air duct to the Pack Two outlet ducting. The emergency Ram Air check valve does not require electronic control. The emergency Ram Air check valve will be open whenever the pressure in the Ram Air ducting is greater than cabin pressure. The flight deck and cabin zone temperature can be manually controlled by either using the cockpit or the PAX cabin selector knob on the air conditioning pneumatic control panel in the cockpit. However, control of the cabin zone temperature can be transferred to the respective selector knob on the flight attendant control panel by selecting the attendant position on the PAX cabin knob in the cockpit. With the optional two-zone configuration installed, each cabin zone has a separate flight attendant temperature select knob. The respective control knobs are connected directly to the AMS controller, which in turn regulates the air temperature accordingly. The ECS Synoptic page in the cockpit displays temperature information of the cockpit, cabin, and cargo compartments of the aircraft. Cockpit, forward cabin, and aft cabin set values display the temperature reference set by the switches on the cockpit and cabin selector panels. Cockpit, forward cabin, and aft cabin actual values display the actual temperature measured by the respective temperature sensors. The cabin pressure control system (CPCS). Controls the aircraft cabin pressure and provides maximum safety and comfort during all segments of flight and ground operation. The system operates in either automatic or manual mode. Normal operation is automatic. The cabin pressure control system consists of the following main components: one cabin pressure controller, one cabin outflow valve. One negative pressure relief valve. One positive pressure relief valve. And one static port. One pressurization panel, located on the overhead panel in the cockpit, is installed for the crew to select the system modes. Insert the landing field elevation. Actuate the cabin outflow valve manually, and to dump the cabin pressure in the event of an emergency. System status information is indicated continuously on the ICAS and the ECS Synoptic page, while various messages will be displayed on the ICAS in the event of failures. The cabin pressure controller contains two identical control channels. In auto mode, one channel is in control and the other is in standby. The channel in control uses actual cabin pressure from the cabin pressure sensors and various data from other aircraft systems, such as ambient pressure, engine power signals, landing gear information, barrow correction, landing field elevation, and cruise flight level to calculate the requested reference cabin pressure. In manual mode, both channels of the cabin pressure controller revert to standby mode. The outflow valve position can then be directly controlled by the pilots. Note: manual mode is differential pressure limited, but not cabin altitude limited, and no automatic cabin depressurization on ground is provided. The outflow valve modulates the cabin pressure by modulating airflow from the pressurized cabin into the surrounding environment. 
It can be controlled automatically or manually. The system also includes a pneumatically driven positive pressure relief valve, which opens independently whenever differential pressure exceeds 8.6 PSID. To protect the aircraft structure against damage due to a positive overpressure, a spring-loaded negative pressure relief valve limits the negative differential pressure to minus 0.5 psid to protect the cabin against damage. The static pressure port senses the ambient static pressure and transmits it to the safety valve in order to allow the overpressure relief device to work. The static port is electrically heated in order to assure there are no obstructions of sensing orifices due to icing. The pressurization panel in the cockpit is directly connected to the cabin pressure control system controller and provides the following switches. A rotary mode switch with three locked positions to select auto or manual modes and to set LFE, landing field elevation, control override. When the switch is commanded to LFE position, the pressurization system remains in the automatic mode and only the LFE will be in manual mode. A spring-loaded rotary selector knob with two momentary positions to increase or decrease the landing field elevation. A spring-loaded rotary selector knob with two momentary positions to control the outflow valve manually and a guarded dump button. When pressed, the dump function is activated and a white stripe bar illuminates on the button. During normal operation, the pilot selects the cruise flight level and the landing field elevation in the FMS before takeoff. If no FMS is available, landing field elevation must be manually selected using the rotary knob on the pressurization panel. In this case, the final cruise level will be calculated by the cabin pressure controller using actual ambient pressure during the flight. The system now calculates a target cabin pressure and a corresponding pressure rate of change for each of the following cabin pressure control system flight modes. Ground. The aircraft is on ground but not within the takeoff run. Takeoff. The aircraft is performing the takeoff run. Climb. The aircraft climbs to the cruise flight level. Cruise. The aircraft is flying at a constant altitude. Descent. The aircraft is descending towards the landing field. And abort. The flight is aborted and the aircraft returns to the takeoff field. ICAS indication. LFE will return to takeoff field elevation if the present pressure altitude is below 10,000 feet or 5,000 feet above field elevation. Information from the FADEC, the ADC, and the FMS are used within the cabin pressure controller to determine the current flight mode. The cabin pressure control system operates for aircraft ceilings up to 41,000 feet. During cruise below 37,000 feet, the nominal differential pressure will be limited to 7.8 PSID. While cruising above 37,000 feet will limit the differential pressure to 8.3 PSID. As a result, maximum cabin altitude at aircraft ceiling is limited to 8,000 feet. A cabin altitude High warning is generated whenever the cabin altitude rises above 9,700 feet. Note, in case of high airfield operation, the warning will be active for a cabin altitude of 500 feet above takeoff field elevation. For cabin altitudes exceeding 14,500 feet, the outflow valve will close automatically to prevent the cabin from climbing further. The system automatically limits differential pressure by opening the outflow valve or in the event of failure by opening the safety valve. The automatic mode provides a single action dump function. This function is used in the event of emergency evacuation, smoke evacuation, 
or for fast cabin depressurization. Selection of the dump button will deactivate the ECS packs and the recirculation fans, and then depressurize the cabin at a rate of 2,000 feet per minute up to 12,400 feet. If the cabin altitude is above 12,400 feet when the dump is activated, the cabin altitude will rise due to natural leak. The cabin can be depressurized to higher altitudes using the manual mode. Rotating the pressurization mode selector knob to the manual position allows manual control of the outflow valve. When manual mode is selected, both channels of the cabin pressure controller revert to standby state, but only one channel performs the manual operation. The channel selection is automatic. Note, in manual mode there is no automatic cabin depressurization on the ground after landing. The following information is indicated continuously on the ICUS. Cabin altitude. Cabin pressure rate. Cabin differential pressure. Landing field elevation. Additionally, outflow valve position is continuously indicated on the ECS synoptic page. And safety valve status will be displayed if the valve is open. The following ICUS, advisory, caution and warning messages will be displayed on the ICUS in case of failures. The advisory message, pressurization auto fault, will be displayed if one channel of the controller can no longer perform auto mode, but the second channel is fully operational. The caution message, pressurization auto fail, indicates that both channels failed to perform auto mode. The crew must select manual mode and control the cabin altitude manually using the conversion tables in the aircraft manual. The caution message pressurization manual fail is displayed when both channels fail to perform manual mode. The warning message cabin altitude high together with a red cabin altitude indication will be displayed when the cabin altitude exceeds 9,700 feet. Additionally, an RL warning will say cabin, cabin, cabin.